Well, hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. I almost forgot what day of the week it was. Oh, all right. All right. We are here continuing on the rune actual play series that I've been doing. Um, ooh, I'm going to spill my coffee. Uh, so for folks who are catching up or haven't seen the first two parts, first, you should do that. There's VODs on YouTube for the first two parts. Um, happy Wednesday to you. Aaron is here. Dice Ghost is here. Uh, I am uh, on my third part of playing Coral Rock, which is a realm uh, that Aaron here in chat actually created. Tariq, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome. Um, that I'm really excited to uh, have been spending the last two days playing uh, on stream. I've been having a ton of fun with it. Um, I just realized I didn't download the, the newest update for it, so I should do that. I'm pretty sure there's nothing that has happened so far that I need to worry about um, in terms of the update. Oh, other than the, the death counter thing. So we'll talk about that in just a second. Hello, Joel. Good to see ya. Um, Okay, so to catch people up on this playthrough so far, Coral Rock. Um, I have so far only explored this side of the map. Uh, I died a bunch. I almost crossed, and then I died, killed by eels on my way across. Um, so I have left myself a note uh, that is, run the gap, you fool. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to just keep this version up. Uh, just because this one has the marks that I have, and I think the only change is the, the death counter thing that matters right now. Um, so, I have left a note for myself. I've died six times so far in my playthrough of this realm. I feel like that's probably more than other people have. <laughs> I've had some bad luck. I've had some great luck, too. Um, last time we gathered, I died, so I can reset my health. Um, I'm at six deaths, and... Um, I got a spyglass. I got a spyglass and I increased my lore, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, the last three deaths were really like one after another. Uh, I, I started off really strong yesterday and then I just died, died, died. <laughs> um, so, what does that mean? Uh, so I've died six times. This is just for our own pure fun now. Six. Um, once you die four or more times in this realm. It doesn't really matter how many you die. Uh, it's the same penalty of minus one move for the first four turns of uh, the first fight you do. So I'm covered in like these uh, coral covered snails, uh, according to the, the rules of the lore of this realm. Um, so I'm going to just try and run the gap. I, I, I've got a note here that says it's high tide. So I'm assuming that I left myself the right note. Um, and I have three ticks in the tide uh, thing right now. So I'm here at Sigil, at the Sigil, which is sort of the bonfire equivalent in Rune. Uh, so I'm going to go one, two. So I'm going to move. Uh, so it, it's going to shift to low tide uh, after I move once. And then I'll mark my low tide one time uh, for the realm clock. And it is now low tide, and I am at four. I'm pretty sure there's nothing I want to do low tide wise along the way here. Yeah, I don't care about those rations. And there is a fight I can do here uh, at four against the scout commander and two soldiers. Um, which, like, I could do, but I just want to cross the gap. <laughs> I just want to cross the gap. I wrote my note. No, no key only cross as Dice Ghost reminded me at the very beginning of the stream. So no key only cross. I'm just going to cross. I'm not going to I'm not going to fight these people. Uh, so crossing the gulch. It is low tide, uh, which means uh, I'm going to mark the realm clock once uh, during my passage here. Uh, I descend into the gulch. So in case folks are unfamiliar with what I'm talking about. There's a space here between four and five that you can you can navigate either high tide or low tide. It's just the threat of what happens during that time is different. 
I'm crossing while it is low tide uh, because I really want to go to this side of the island. I haven't been there yet. So I'm hoping to get to 0.5 today. Um, so uh, you descend into the gulch, hurrying to cross to the northern island, uh, northern Ireland, nor northern island before the tide rises again. So I got to fight these eels. We remember this eel fight from yesterday. Um, I felt so confident in the eel fight. Actually, uh, so my, the eel fight that we did yesterday, this exact fight, I felt was a perfect representation of how rune combat uh, looks and feels. Uh, that I, I clipped it, I highlighted it as a thing, and uploaded it as its own separate video on YouTube. Because it's like 14 minutes long, and it shows you kind of exactly the highs and lows of combat in rune. Uh, I was very, very uh, tickled uh, and pleased with how that went. Even though I died. I died, but it was worth it. Uh, so here we go. So... Uh, I need to, I need to fight. I need to fight the, these eels, which means I need to set them up on my map. There's two walking eels at A3 and D3. Uh, all right, let's get some eels down. A3, D3. So they're there. Uh, and the geist eel is at D1. I'm at B2. Okay, so I'm B2. We'll use the skeleton as our geist eel. I think I still, I think if I remember correctly, it's the like, square of difficult terrain here in the middle and i start on it uh, but i'll double check that difficult terrain b2 b3 c2 c3 yeah cool excellent um if you're watching this and you're not sure what i mean by these codes uh it's, ex it's, it's explained in the rules that are in the playtesting materials but basically it's a b c d up top one two three four along the, uh, the side and you use that to quickly orient yourself on the map Okay, so here's the setup. I'm at minus one movement for four turns. So let me get my D4 here to uh, track that. Let me set the health for these eels. Uh, so I've got that set up. I'm gonna track all of that here in front of me rather than cluttering the board, um, the, the screen in front of you. So um, don't worry, I'll track all of that. Uh, okay, so. I think that means we are ready to fight. I will now go down to the cards for these, these really well-made cards that Aaron made for this. Uh, as a reminder, if you didn't see it yesterday, we learned, we realized these walking eels are not just like big giant eels. They are eel-headed marauders, uh, and they're not native to the coral rock, the realm that we're in. Uh, but they moved in to fill the vacancy, which immediately tells us like a lot about this, the story, the lore of this place. Aaron has done a fantastic job with this flavor text. Also, just like the style of this card is like super good, super good. All right, so our walking eels, they have four health each. They uh, attack at adjacent in two spaces away. The geist eel is a spell casting eel. Uh, real creepy. Uh, it also has four health and does adjacent in two space attack. So they same health, same ranges that I'm working with, but they have different move sets that they do depending on what uh, dice I roll when figuring out what they're going to do during combat. Speaking of, that's how we start combat. So I'm going to roll some dice here for these uh, eels and see how it goes. I'll, I'll, roll, I'll roll for the walking eels first. It's a four and a two. Okay, so let's go back over here. Uh, this one got a four. This one gets a two. Great. Excellent. Uh, and how this works, uh, yeah, you should be really proud of them. They're they're fantastic. Um, so how this works, uh, I'll like kind of do early recaps of rules at the beginning of these videos just to catch people up. The enemies move. Um, they try to get, according to Aaron's updated move rules, which are very good and probably will be something very similar to what will the, be in the official rules, the enemies try to get to the um, the the lowest or closest range that they attack at. So these eels are going to try to get to adjacent range anytime they move. So one of them is going to move up to two spaces to get to adjacent, this one. Uh, so it's going to move here, and it is now adjacent to me. So it's happy with where it's at. Uh, and this one is moving... Oh, sorry, I'm doing that opposite. It's just only moving one space, which it did. Uh, this other one is going to move two spaces to get itself in a very similar position. Uh, so I'm going to just have it move here. Normally difficult terrain slows things down, but it does not slow down these tricksy eels. Um, it really was a genuine moment of surprise when we're all like, wait a minute, they're not just giant eels? 
these are people? <laughs> like people eels? It was real creepy. Uh, okay, so that's what those eels are doing. Um, the Geist eel got a five. Uh, so let's just put this down so we can track that. The, oh, God. The, the Geist eel on a five. I don't remember the Geist eel as much. Move to harm one and it bashes. Ooh, that's pretty that's pretty gnarly. Um, okay, so I think they're just gonna like circle me here. So how much harm do I have coming my way? Uh, I've got one from the Geist eel uh, and I've got two more coming from the other eel. So I have three harm coming my way right now if I stay where I am. It's gonna be hard for me to move because I have minus one movement right now, so I gotta hope that I roll really well with my uh, weapons. I've just been like putting all of my weapon dice into jail recently because they've been uh, horrible. Uh, so I've got some new dice. I've got some new dice to try out. So enemies have moved. We know what they're gonna do. They're gonna try and hurt me. Um, hey, Raul, good to see you. Um, now it's my turn to figure out how I'm gonna respond. Um, if you're watching this unfamiliar, my goal in doing something like this is to uh, kind of mimic the experience in Souls-like games where enemies will telegraph what they're going to do, oftentimes with a visual or auditory cue where you know the attack that's coming in and you have to try and adapt uh, and, and fight to, to match that thing that's coming. So we know what the enemy is going to do. What are we going to do about it? So I'm going to roll my dice. Five and two. Five and two. Okay, what can we do with a five and a two? Well, we didn't get enough to uh, get out of movement jail. So unfortunately, we are stuck. We're going to take all this harm right now, which is uh, a huge bummer. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put assign my five to my shield so I can block at least one of these uh, uh, bits of damage that are coming my way. Uh, and then I'll put the two over here to do a little bit of harm I'm going to do harm to the Geist Eel, because, I don't know, it just seems like a tricky spellcaster, and I don't... You always nuke the mage, right? You nuke the mage. So I'm going to do my one harm uh, to this thing, and then I'm going to block one of the three harm coming my way. Uh, that's eight. Now, there's two special effects that are happening from these eels. One, I got gooped. That's what we were calling it yesterday. It's where uh, I have minus one move. So now I have minus two move on my next turn. I'm not moving. I'm stuck where I am. That's super unfortunate. Um, the other thing is I got bashed, which means I'm going to get knocked back a space, uh, if, if I remember my own bash rule correctly. Uh, so I get knocked back a space and I'm now in this space with this, um, this eel. This eel and I are happy. Uh, I'm actually happy to be next to the eel because it can't hurt me here. So it's going to want to move away from me. Uh, so here we go. That's the first round of combat. I've ticked down my uh, movement penalty clock here on my own, so I have three more rounds of negative one move. Um, let's see how these uh, these eels manifest. Let's roll our walking eels first. A three and a four. I'm gonna move that four over here. Oh, got too many too many layers going on here. All right, three and a four, uh, and then let's just roll the geist eel as well. It got a six. Oh, I don't remember what a, a six on a six is always like the worst outcome for any enemy. By worst, I mean worst for you, the player, because they usually do something powerful. Um, let's figure out what our uh, other things going to do first. Um, what did I say? It is a three and a four. Uh, so moving two uh, to get adjacent to the other one is moving one and gooping. So. Yeah, they're going to just kind of keep following me, right? They're going to keep following me around. This one's going to use this opportunity to get away from me. Um, that's a rough six. Is it a rough six? I don't know. I don't know what that means. Uh, Geist Eel six. Move one uh, to try to get adjacent. So it will move here. And it is going to do what to me? An enemy closest to the player uh, gets block three this turn. Wow, okay, so these two eels are equidistant from each other. Um, so like we'll just we'll just say it's this one that is getting the uh, the bonus for now. Yikes. So like everybody is equidistant from me. Uh, so we'll just give it to one of the eels here. So basically we you know it's it's this whispering eel spellcaster. It has protected this one. So I'm not gonna be able to murder this eel uh, this turn. Um, 
yeah it could that could be super nasty if i if i was like if i had my mobility um and i had the ability to kind of like try to kite these things then like my kiting would turn against me for a moment where like i would only have one of them next to me and then suddenly i can't hurt it this turn and like that gives the other eels a time to catch up it's a really clever move i like it a lot um all right so let's see what i'm going to do here uh on my turn um these guys did okay last turn let's see how they do this turn uh three and four three and four what can we do with a three and a four uh all right so i think we definitely have to do this i think we definitely have to put this on block to just continue blocking uh and just doing uh some amount of harm now i can't move i don't have enough move even though i have uh two movements worth uh, i have minus one move from my death penalty and minus one move from the eel that gooped me uh, so i would love to get on top of this geist eel but i can't um so i'm blocking one this thing isn't hurting me these two are each hurting me for one so i'm only going to take one damage not horrible um but i'm going to deal two harm to the geist eel the geist eel is almost dead um that feels good do I want to do too harm to the Geist Eel? Like, I, I I, think part of it is also thinking about, like, thinking about, like, how you maximize damage. Like, three harm is doable. And knocking another one down to two harm may... Like, I want, I want as many of them to be, with like, within killing range as possible so that I have flexibility. So I think I'm actually going to do two to this one. That might not make any sense. That might not be the actual good play, but it's what I'm doing. Uh, and maybe my explanation of why I'm doing it makes sense, and maybe you're watching this going like, what the hell is Spencer doing? <laughs> just, just kill the guy and steal. But that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so that's my turn. I'm going to tick down my death counter clock here. Uh, I did get gooped again. So again, it's gonna this next round, I'm, I'm locked. I'm not moving. Um, I, basically, none of these eels are going to move either, because they're exactly where they want to be. So really, right now, we're rolling just to see... Um, if I'm getting gooped, and if this spellcaster is going to bash me uh, or do anything like that. So let's roll to see what the eels are going to do. Two and two. That makes it real simple. Uh, that's just the uh, lots of movement and harm one. So I've got two harm coming my way. These eels won't move. They're happy with where they are. Uh, and the geist eel gets a two. Wow, everybody got a two. Um, yeah, eels again. I'm, I'm stuck, in, stuck in eel town. Uh... Okay, so the guy steals going to do two harm to me with the two. That's unfortunate. Um, so I've got four harm coming my way. Uh, let's see how we do. These dice are not good. These new dice, not good. i got to replace them again. Four and two. Hey, remember when I said... Remember when I decided not to put the Geist Eel at one harm? Because I was like, no, nah, I can do something else. I'm only going to do one harm this turn, and I could have killed the goddamn Geist Eel. Um, or I could summon these and deal three harm and kill the Geist Eel and take all the harm. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to just try. I it, I, I got to do this. I got to kill this Geist Eel. I'm going to kill the Geist Eel. Uh, I'm going to take all the harm. Four harm. I'm, it's supposed to be like painful to watch sometimes when because sometimes I'm a real elite gamer and then other times I'm uh, a total trash noob. Uh, right now I feel like a trash noob, um, but I killed the guy's deal and I took four harm and I feel like I can handle two eels. I feel like two eels is totally fine. Also, I didn't get gooped. Um, thank you, thank you, Dice Ghost. We'll catch you later. Um, I've got only one more turn with my minus one penalty, and I only have minus one penalty going on into this turn, which means if I get two movement, I can get on top of one of these eels and start to quickly reduce the amount of harm that I'm uh, taking. So I'm going to replace my weapon dice. I'm going to do this again. All right, let's roll up these uh, these eels. Uh, we get a one and a two. One and a two. Uh, I'm going to just stop updating these because I can... Working memory hold this stuff in my head. Uh, one and two, they're uh, they're not going to move. Again, they're happy with where they are. I've got two harm coming my way. Now, what can I do about that? What can I do about two harm coming my way? I can roll a four to three. What does that do for me? Four. I feel like I'm rolling like real middling here. 
four and three. I feel like I have to take the block. I feel like I definitely have to take the block. Block one harm. And this is actually good. This is good. Um, so I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do it like this. So I have two movement worth of stuff. Minus one because of my death penalty, so I can only move one. I'm going to move here. I'm going to do two harm, which gets increased to three, which is enough to murder this eel. Um, and I'm not going to take any harm because these eels only deal damage when they are at adjacent. Or, uh, yeah, adjacent or two spaces away. So actually, this one is two spaces. That one's still going to hurt me. So I'm still going to take one harm. But guess what? I'm blocking it. So... Right as Dice Ghost left, my big gamer energy really did kick off. So, Dice Ghost, I hope you're watching this VOD later on and cheering me on and, and going like, wow, Spencer really pulled this one out. Um, I'm proud of myself. Okay, I've killed the eel. It's me versus one eel. This is exactly how it went last time. I can do this. I believe in myself. Uh, the eel gets a two again. So, it's going to pursue me. Um, it's going to move on to this difficult terrain to taunt me that it can, and it also just makes it harder for me to get away from it. Um, right, because the only way I can close the gap now is if I get uh, a movement of two. So the eel is clever. The eel is really clever. Clever. Yeah, I'm probably about to die. Let's find out. Three and two. What is with my rolling? When other play people play uh, rune, do they roll better than me? Do people roll better than me? Uh, three and two is not particularly helpful. Um, I think, honestly, rather than dealing harm, I'm gonna... I'm gonna block. I'm gonna just block the one harm that's coming my way, because I only have three health. I'm gonna summon these and block them, because, um... I just can't. I didn't get enough, uh, movement to close the gap, and I only have three HP. Uh, and I just can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> Nice Ghost was stealing my game, my gamer energy. Uh, alright, let's do this again. This eel gets a three. Wow, okay, so the eels are, uh, uh, I'm rolling relatively predictable for the eels, which is nice. So it's, it's not gonna move, and it's gonna do one harm to me. Uh, I am five and four. Now I feel like we're in a spot where I can, I can do something interesting. Five and four. Uh, that gets me the movement I need to close the gap. Um, five and four with the sword and shield combo we learned yesterday. It doesn't matter which one I put where. It's the same outcome. So if I put the four here and the five here, it's the same thing as if I put the four here and the five here. Uh, so five and four is a predictable outcome with sword and board. Um, what does it mean? It's a uh, I can move two, which is enough to get into this difficult terrain. Uh, and it is enough to deal two plus one, because we're in the same spot. So I'm dealing three harm to this eel. And it was a full health eel, now it's at a one health. And it can't hurt me, because I am, uh, not adjacent to it. I'm on top of it, which is exactly where I want to be. Uh, so, folks, I think you're gonna watch me kill this eel. I think you're gonna watch me. Uh, I think this will be the last round. Eel gets a four, that's the gooping power. Move one, harm one. Uh, so I think it's going to continue to be annoying and moving into difficult terrain. It's going to goop me, which is going to slow down my movement if I don't manage to kill it this turn. But I feel pretty confident that I can do that. I got a 6 and a 1. I mean, I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to be greedy. I'm going to apply that 6. I'm going to kill. The 1's just going to get burned. Uh, I'm going to kill it. It's going to do 1 harm to me. I am at 2 health, but I think I've done it. I can now finally cross the ocean. And then let whatever kills me on the other side immediately kill me. <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay. Um, okay, so we are... Um, I got to mark a, a tide for that, I think. I think I... Or maybe I already did mark. I think I'm already marked that tide. Um... Okay, cool. I did it. I killed the eels. I did it. I have two health left. I don't have the death penalty in future fights anymore because uh, I don't need that anymore uh, because I've done my first fight. So what does that mean for us? Let's go back to crossing the gap. I still have a little bit of clock to work with. Um, sir oh, I can search. I can search. When you finish the above fight, you can take this action before moving to your new point. I have. I have the time. I can do that. Um, find the harpoon weapon 
If taking this action causes the realm clock to fill, you are trapped by the tides after you find the weapon and you die. Do I have enough? I, did I track my... I, I'm either dead or I got real lucky. Does anybody remember how much clock I have? I should have been tracking that. I, I don't remember if I ticked it for the fight or not. Let me think. Let me think this through. I started with... Shit, what did I start with? I should have wrote that. I should have written that down. Um, I think I started with three and high, right? So this would be switch to low, fresh low, one low. Crossing is two low. Fighting is three low. Yeah, I'm at three low. I'm at three low, which means uh, if, if I search for this thing, I die. I, I mean, I want the weapon. I want the harpoon weapon, but I die. My whole goal is to cross, and now I don't have the ability to cross. I'm, I'm going to take the weapon. Of course, I'm going to take the weapon. I'm going to take the harpoon. All right, I get a harp, I get a harpoon, and then I immediately drown. <laughs> okay, let's update this, uh, just for our own sake. Drowning puts me at seven. That also puts us at a fresh high tide. And let's go look at this weapon that I just picked up. I got a new weapon, which means I'm going to probably update my sword. Although maybe I'll go long sword and harpoon. We'll find out. Um, okay, here's the, here's the harpoon. It's a one-handed weapon. It does uh, a range of adjacent in two spaces. Uh... Two, three, or four, it's move one, harm one, lure. Ooh, okay. Uh, a five and a six, it does harm three, damn, and lure. Okay, so lure. Before harm is dealt this turn, you can pull a target in one range, uh, or at range one space closer to you. You can still deal this weapon's harm to it this turn. Oh, boy. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So the question then is, do I go harpoon shield or harpoon longsword? <laughs> right? Do I go like all murder? I try to just kill things very quickly without blocking? Uh, or do I... I'm gonna go murder, right? Yeah, that's a good fair. Okay, let me let me transpose this. I because I'm doing this in a, a a different format. Um so let's let's put this stuff uh yeah, let's let's put this stuff somewhere else for now. Oh, sorry folks. Uh I'm gonna just put it down here with the other old cards. Uh and Probably should have copied it, but we'll find out. Okay, here we go. Harpoon. Harpoon. Uh, it's a weapon one-handed. It is adjacent, uh, and it is two spaces. And then let's figure out what is the harpoon stuff. Two through four. Excellent. So I'm going to just kind of copy this. Don't. Okay, so that's a two. That's a four. Uh, it is move one, harm one, lure. Uh, I'm going to just kind of, yeah, I don't need to use the word harm or deal, right? It's obvious. Lure. Ooh, I'm excited about this lure opportunity. Um, and then this is going to be five and six. Five and six is going to be... Harm three, I believe, and lure. Woo. Uh, but we'll find out if I remember correctly. Harm three and lure. Okay. And if I deal harm to something, before harm is dealt, you can pull a target one closer to you. That's like super, super good uh, against these eels because the eels... They, they don't fight you at, at same. So, like, 
if I really wanted to, I could pull something to same, even though it means, pardon me, the, the harpoon doesn't deal harm. I could still hurt something with my sword, and it's effectively like blocking because I'm negating the like archers and the eels damage if I just make them be on my space. Um, so it is, it's kind of like a block. Does it still deal the harpoon damage if they're not in my technical range anymore? We can still deal this weapon's harm to it this turn, but I wonder if that works if I move it to a range that the weapon doesn't technically work at. Aaron, hopefully, I think you're still here. I mean, you can, you're the, you're the ultimate arbiter on, on that, whether or not. Because I understand, like, if I pull something from two to adjacent, it's still in my harpoon's range. But if I move something from adjacent to same, would I still be able to hurt them with the harpoon? I'll let Aaron decide, and then uh, we'll we'll play based off of his ruling. If he, if he if he's here, I, I I don't know if he's actually here. <laughs> okay, so while uh, Aaron contemplates that, yeah, you can deal even if you pull it closer than you should be able to hit. Okay, there we go. The, the creator of the weapon has spoken. Oh, well, that makes it really good. That makes it really, really good. I mean, I, I like it either way. Um, that's fantastic. Okay, folks. You can also pull something in and hit a different thing in range. Yeah, I figured you had to spear an enemy to pull it closer. And, oh, that's a good point, right? Like, it's not like I'm, like, lassoing it and pulling it in. I'm stabbing it and pulling it. That's a really good, fair point. Um, all right, so we are back at Sigil. I'm dead. I died. It's just totally worth dying to get this harpoon. This harpoon rocks. I'm rocking longsword harpoon. We're going to use it right away in this first fight. All right? One, two, three. Yeah, we're going to use it right away in this first fight because I want to cross at high so I don't have to fight the eels again. I don't want to fight the eels again. <laughs> um... Oh, I should also mark that I found the, um, the, the harpoon. Wow, that landed perfectly. Uh, okay. Hey, Spencer, just read Afterburner. Uh, it makes me so excited after seeing what cool things come up with other... Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah, that's a Lumen game, right? Yeah, there are some really cool things that people are coming up with Lumen. Like, everybody who's made a Lumen thing surprises me and, and makes cool new things that I... Again, I, I say this all the time, and I know I, I sound like a broken record, but I always truly believe that people will come up with things that are better and cooler than me uh, for my own stuff. Um, and I love that. I love that. Like, like Aaron made this realm, and I know, like, Binary and a few other people are also working on stuff uh, for Rune. And I, like, I just know that they're going to come up with really cool things because there's so many awesome designers out there. Um, okay, so... Yeah, I think I'm going to fight these soldiers. So I'm going to go... Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go from the map. I'm going to go one. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to cross. All right? It's a fresh high tide. I'm just going to cross. And then I'm going to deal with the fight whatever is on the other side. Uh, so here we go. One, two. And we mark that. One, two. Uh, and then we cross again. Here we go. What is a high tide cross? Requires lore plus one. Well, I've got lore three, so I'm very smart. Um, spend three health. Oh, that's right. This is me just like I kind of drown my way over. Fine, fine. I'll spend three health. I finally crossed this gap. Uh, so I died. I went back to full, and now I am at seven health. Um, but I have crossed. I've made it to five. I can't wait to turn the page and actually see what it says. Um, after I feel comfortable with Rune System, I plan to make a Realm 2. You gave the idea of a City Realm. Yeah, that would be really cool. Um, <laughs> um, I think a City Realm would be super cool. Um, just gonna, uh, again, like this is why I want to do the Rune Atlas project, because... Um, I've got like my own ideas about what a realm is, and then inevitably somebody else will come up with a wildly different approach to doing it, and I'll be like, oh yeah, that actually makes total sense and is very good. Um, so, all right, here we go. Gulch Peak. We haven't been here yet. This is the uh, point 0.5, which is here on the other side. It is 
uh, I, I assume I have to tick to get that. That would make sense. So I'm at three ticks into high. Uh, yeah, when this is an additional, oh wait, this is just up here. Um, I'm assuming I, I would normally take to go four to five. So I'm at three ticks. One to two, two to four, four to five. Okay, Gulch Peak. Tall hills form a natural levee in the north side of the gulch, uh, offering refuge from the powerful waters below, though not just for you. Of course not. Um, high, high tide and low tide are the same at this place, but there's also some other stuff going on. Um, looks like there's some searching opportunities for me here, but uh, it won't be high tide uh, afterwards. Uh... There's a Dell that requires a lot more lore than I have and the goddamn key that I want <laughs> that I don't have. So I don't think it's worth me fighting these people because I don't have the stuff to do the Dell. I don't have enough lore and I don't have the key. So I don't want to I'm not going to read this stuff because I don't want to know what it is. So I'm going to just I'm just going to move on. I'm going to move on. I'm going to fill my clock uh, and reset it to low. Make sure I have that updated here. It is a fresh low tide. Uh, I'm going to move to... I actually don't even remember what the map looks like. Five or, or six and, or seven. Um, I'm going to stay on land before I go... No, actually, I'm going to I'm gonna go like this. Five to seven. I'm going to go to seven. Seven. Okay. It is a fresh low tide at seven. Uh, a natural stone shelf pockmarked with small tide pools and thick rocky spires. When the tide is high, only the tops of the pillars pierce the surface. Okay, high tide, low tide. Uh, oh, fuck, this is where the Rune Lord lives. <laughs> so, I don't want to fight. I'm not fighting the Rune Lord yet, because I still have my movement penalty. Um, this realm's Rune Lord resides at the Hollow Pool of Amity, uh, which is where we are. Um, once they are defeated, their rune is yours for the taking. However, being here at the right time to be able to confront the rune lord is tricky, and there aren't, and they aren't the only frequent visitors to this place. Um, depending on your understanding of the realm, you may arrive too soon and fend off other armies. Yeah, or, yeah, okay. At the start of each wave, reset the battlefield based on tide. Oh, wow. Um, so I can skip. I can skip these fights if I have enough lore. I have lore three, which means I gotta go find another lore somewhere in here so that I can just fight the Rune Lord. Right? Isn't it? It's total soul's energy of just like, oh, oh no, this is a boss. Uh, okay, so it's it's low tide. I'm not fight, I'm not fighting this boss. So I'm gonna I went from five to seven. I'm gonna go back to six. Low tide six right now. What I need to find some lore. I need to find some lore. Ooh, I see some learn opportunities here. Oh, yes. Uh okay, pensive bluffs. Let's read. A tall sheer cliff with a clear view of the coastline in the area south of the gulch. Another enormous statue sits on a boulder near the crest, scowling up at the sky. Oh, that's okay, so that's interesting. Let's think about this for a second. Let's 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 understand the lore. Um So, there were giant statues at four, okay? There were giant statues at four. And if I recall correctly, these giant statues were looking into the water. They were looking down, like at their feet, in, uh, into the water and stuff like that. Um, this is a giant statue that is looking up at the sky, and it is scowling. So that's interesting, isn't it? It's, it's telling us that maybe there is some sort of animosity between sky and sea. Um, these giant figures, whatever they represent, are certainly anti-sky by the sounds of it. Um, and are, are they seem to be at least contemplating or uh, thinking about the sea. So, But here's the best part. This is just me interpreting what I think the realm means. Uh, and this might be not at all what Aaron was thinking when he wrote it might be the exact same thing might be a slight uh, reinterpretation that's the beautiful thing about it right that's what's cool about souls games is you're like everybody has their own interpretation of the lore um 
for my next realm, I should just have the boss fight automatically start if you wander into that. I mean, that's definitely a thing that should, like, that could be included in future realms. Like, this is an unskippable fight. You're here. You have to fight the boss. Because um, that's often, that's a very real experience. You, in Souls games, you just show up and you, you die. Um, all right. So it's, it's low tide. One tick low tide. Uh, so here's what we can do. We can learn. If I have the spyglass, which I do, you can take this action without increasing the realm clock. Love it. Gonna do that. Um, mark one lore. Mark one lore. Oh, we're so smart now. We're very smart. Um, very, very smart right now. And the clock doesn't increase. Okay. So here's what we learn with our spyglass. Um, a stone terrace stretches into the water to the southwest, worn smooth by the uh, crashing of waves over countless years and punctuated by a series of tall, rocky pillars. You can climb down to it uh, from here without much difficulty. You feel a strong presence echoing from the area. So this is me looking down at the boss fight that I just did. This is me looking down at it and be like, oh yeah, that's where that asshole is. Um... <laughs> so I know where the boss is. I know where the boss is, and I have four lore. This is the interesting thing, right? I So I could go fight the boss now. I have no idea how to get to eight. It's got to be that key, right? It's got to be the tunnel key that you use at five, which must tunnel you to here. And I kept dying to get the key. So if I die to the boss, which I probably will... Uh, I will try my best to get the key. Okay, so I'm going to move to uh, from 6 to 7. That cost me 1. I'm at 2 ticks into my uh, low tide thing. I think we're in a boss fight here, folks. I think we're in a boss fight. Okay. So it's the same regardless of the tide, right? Um, depending on your understanding there, I mean, uh, da -da 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 -da. At the start of each wave, reset the battlefield based on the tide, then place enemies for the current wave. Um, it's low tide. Oh, I see what's happening here. The terrain shifts based off of the... Um, that's really clever. That's really clever. I think this is going to be a slightly longer fight, so I'm going to actually do a quick be right back. going to do a quick bio break, uh, and then when I'm back, we will do this boss fight. So... Hold tight, everybody. Uh, just a minute. All right, here we go. Uh, so I understand how this, this fight works now. Um, it is the terrain changes based off of the uh, the tide, and it would change as the waves go through, but uh, I'm going straight to the boss because I get to skip wave one. I get to skip wave two because I have four lore, uh, which means I'm going straight to wave three. I'm going straight to fighting the boss, and I'm going to just be stuck in place for four turns, but I've got a harpoon. <laughs> 
Uh, ah, cool, we got the unique uh, tag uh, that we've kind of been talking about in uh, the server. All right, so let's get the terrain set up. A2 through 4 is permanent terrain. So let's get these difficults out of the way. I'm here at uh, low tide, which means these giant spires are up. I immediately forgot what it was. A2 through 4. A2 through 4, C1 and C2. Uh, and C4. Okay, so we've got like some uh, got some walkway or some like hallway action vibes going on here. Um, my I start at B4. Okay, I'm almost there. That's B4. That's where I'm at. Um, the I'm facing the Rune Lord, half giant Maribor. Okay, who starts at C1? Uh oh, wait. They start on permanent terrain. Now, they might be allowed to be on per uh, permanent terrain. I have to go read their card first. This might not actually be, like, a problem. This could be totally acceptable. Um, I just gotta, I gotta go read the, the Giants, Half Giants card. All right, so let's go down to it. These goddamn guys heals. Okay, so we're in a phase, a, a phase fight. Um... Oh, okay, never mind. They it can't be on uh, permanent terrain, so we'll just have to move them. Uh, they are currently set to be at C1, uh, so I can either move them here or here. Kind of makes the most sense. Um, D1, D1 is interesting just because it allows us to use these hallways, but I don't know. I'll let Aaron decide while I read the card here. Uh, phase 1. They have 8 health. Let me get my... Uh, D8 here to count health for us. Um, I'll actually also put it here for us, for everybody else. Boss, HP, 8. Uh, 8 health. They are a same or adjacent person. Ah, damn. I was really hoping that my harpoon would help me a lot. At 0 health, they change to phase 2. Cool, excellent. We're doing the phase thing. Just push them to D1, see how it goes. Will do. Uh, all right, all right. That's that. That's good for me because it buys me a couple turns where I can get my movement penalty not taking, not being a problem. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, let's start this fight. Get a roll for our uh, Maribor, the uh, the boss. They get a two. Uh, move two, harm one. Uh, so they're gonna go bump, bump. They're coming towards me. Uh, now they they are what uh, same and adjacent, so I just don't want to be next to them right now. That's that's fine. I want to get here honestly and use my harpoon. So uh, let's see how I do. Um, four and four. All right. Well, there's no there's no interpretation here. Four and four is going to be what it is, and let's figure out what I can do with four and four. Um, it gives me a lot of movement. I have a lot of movement. I have two move. Um, if I do get close, I can deal a lot of harm. Um, so if I go here, if I go here and I lure it on, I can deal. I can deal a good bit of harm, and they also deal a bunch of harm. I think I should do the same thing, which is not hurt them from. I like get a little bit of chip damage in before they close the gap. So. I'm not going to fully use my my turn. Basically, I'm going to move one. I'm going to do the harpoon attack, reduce the boss's health to seven. I'm not going to use my other attacks. Uh, I'm going to take every moment I can to get um, free damage on the boss. Oh, and I wouldn't even be able to move there anyway because I have minus one move. So this is literally all I can do. Um, I could I could pull it closer to use the sword. And then they're hurting me for one. Actually, yeah, I'm going to do that. Okay, fuck that. Okay, here's here's what I'm actually doing. So I have two movement. I mean, can only move one, though, because of my movement penalty. So I'm going to move here. I'm going to lure. I'm going to spear it. Pull it in. Ha! That does one harm to the boss and allows me to swing and hit with my sword. So that's two more harm to the boss. I am going to take the boss's harm, which is, I think, only one. It's only one. We're fine with that. Wait, do I have seven health? Oh no. For some reason I thought I had full health. 
maybe maybe that wasn't a good idea. We'll figure it out. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, boss is going to get a two, uh, which is going to be the same thing that it did before. Move two, harm one. So they're going to move on top of me. Uh, I am going to try and get away from them if I can, uh, because my harpoon does not work with them being in the same space as me. So I got to really hope I roll well here. Five and two. Five and two. Um, okay, well. Oops. Ah! Five and two. That's really unfortunate. I would have loved to do a shit ton of damage with my harpoon, but uh, I can't get off of them. Uh... Five and two, which means I think that. Oh wait, I think I'm okay. I, I I can do this. I forgot that the harpoon has better range or better ranges of use. I'm so used to the two not being useful to the shield, but it is good for the harpoon. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do like that. I think, uh, which with my minus one penalty does uh does mean I can only move one, but I do want to be able to be one space away. Uh, actually, I don't know if I want to quarter myself. I'm going to go here first. Uh, I am doing three harm. Three harm to the boss, and they are doing one harm to me. Okay, okay. I feel like I'm doing pretty good so far. Um, but this is only phase one of the boss. Phase two is always uh, way more dangerous. Okay, so. I just have to do two more harm. Try to reduce uh, the harm that the boss does to me. Um, uh, here we go. Boss gets a three. I think that's, again, the move to harm one. I got real, real lucky, honestly. Because, like, look how bad half the rolls are for this boss. Like, moving, harming, blocking, harming, critting. I got really, really lucky. Um, I think that's, that, the only reason I'm alive and, like, doing well in this fight is because, for once, I rolled poorly and it applied to the enemies. Yeah, really ideal boss roll so far. Um, so let's see what I get. I am, I'm due a bad roll here. Uh, four and one. Yeah, so not particularly good. A one literally doesn't do us any good in any way, but I could sum maybe. Um, first, I got to move the boss. So they're here. They're on top of me. Um, I don't have enough movement to get off of them or get them off of me, which is unfortunate. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to move, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to burn this die to, uh, so that after this turn, I don't have the, the movement penalty anymore because I had one more turn left, but you can burn spent stamina die or rolled stamina die. So I'm going to burn that. Uh, I'm going to take the boss to zero which will phase phase to them but they are going to do two harm to me because they're in the same space so i'm on top of the boss in phase two with three health left let's see how it goes all right what happens in phase two they jump back up to eight health okay they jump back up to eight health um they are now they're they're range <laughs> Maribor's uh, range has gone from same adjacent now to two spaces. So there goes my range advantage. Um, special block one against harm from two or more spaces away. So yeah, now my range advantage really doesn't help. Um, so I imagine they've got some sort of like shielding system blocking them now. Um, okay. I think there's some extra stuff on the area too for the phase change. Um... Is there? At the start of each wave, which is like if you if you go through these waves of enemies, but I think I think it doesn't change because I'm not in a different wave, so the terrain won't change. If I'm reading the the rules correctly. All right, so we're fighting Maribor. They're angry. Uh, I'm running out of weapon dice to put in the jail. Uh, I've got my final set here. Hope that these are good. Next page after that, I think. Uh, this looks like some enemies that I don't know about, so I won't read them. Um, okay, so let's see here. What does our half-giant Maribor do on 
their turn. Two. God, I'm real. I'm really rolling ro low for the the boss, which is a godsend. Okay, so two is move two, harm two. Uh, so the giant is happy to be on the same space as me, dealing two harm to me. Um, but I've got all my movement powers back, so I can ideally get away from it and not be on top of it anymore. Uh, six and four. Six and four. Okay, that's pretty good. What can I do with six and four? We can kill each other at the exact same time, I think. No, it's not quite enough to kill. It's so close. I almost could just kill it. That's three, plus three makes six, plus one for being in the same space makes uh, uh, seven harm, but it would kill me. Page 12. The second page has some more. Oh. Oh, fuck, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I should have read all of this. Uh, okay, let me, let me read all this if and then see how this changes things. Um, okay, half giant Maripor. Uh As waves crash down all around you, a massive rusted anchor erupts from the water and slams into the rocks. The chain goes taut, and a hulking ten-foot-tall figure covered in a spotted shell-like carapace, entangled in seaweed, uh, pulls itself into or pulls itself onto dry land. This half giant Maribor, the Rune Lord, and the last of his kind remaining on coral rock, turns his gaze on you. Spooky. Should have read that before I started fighting him. Maribor has fought in two phases. When reduced to zero health in his first phase, the, the Maribor hurls his anchor, demolishing the battlefield around you. Remove all terrain in which two, uh, a two by two corner of the grid includes you. Uh, it w in whichever two by oh okay, remove all terrain in whichever two by two corner of the grid and place permanent terrain on the left hand spaces of that area. Um, Oh, I'm taking a bunch of harm. Okay, so let's first remove all the... So I'm removing this terrain here, because this is the 2x2 two two corner that I'm in, and place permanent terrain on the left-hand spaces of that area. So, uh, so one would go here, and one goes here. Um, if I was in either of those spaces... If, I, if if you were in either of those spaces, move one. If I was in, I'm guessing. Well, if I was in either of those two spaces, I want to make I want to make sure I understand this correctly. Either of which spaces? The spaces where this new terrain gets made, because that makes sense. Obviously, I'm already going to be in these spaces. So, like, it's not an if, it's you are. So, I'm interpreting this as if you are in the spaces where the new terrain comes up, you would have to move out of the way to the right one and take two harm. Okay, so that, that makes sense to me. So, I'm not going to take harm, thankfully, but I am now, like, stuck in a... Um, uh, I'm, like, in a corner here. Yeah. All right, so I'm in this... Yeah, I'm in this grid, right? Um, so I removed the terrain that was in my thing. Okay, I think I've got it all set up. Um, then Maribor moves on to phase two. His armored seaweed-wrapped hands start to glow with magic. Okay, I think I've got it all set up. Um, the terrain is placed in the space you are in and the one below it. Did I do this wrong? Whichever two by two, place them on the left hand spaces of that of that area. I think it's supposed to be like C three and C through four. And I'm I think I'm um I think I'm having trouble interpreting this. How was this initially set up? Uh, A2 through A4. I don't think any of that's going to get affected. B1, B3, B4. Oh, I'm reading the wrong one. A2 through C1, C2, and C4. Right, so this was the terrain that was there before. 
Nope, sorry, C4. This is the train that was here before. This is the two by two grid that I was in. Whichever two by two corner you're in, remove all terrain of the grid that includes you. Yeah, right, the grid quadrant. So I'm. it's this corner here that I'm in. This is the corner that's being affected. Um, remove all the terrain. So that one piece of permanent terrain is going to get removed and place permanent terrain on the left-hand spaces of that area. So the left-hand spaces of that area are here? Do they mean not the spaces to the left of the area, but the left-hand spaces of the area itself? Remove all terrain in whichever 2x2 two two corner of the grid. So I'm, I'm going to just remove it, because that's the first thing it says. Remove that and place permanent terrain on the left-hand spaces of that area. So does that mean putting, in, putting it back, essentially, and then putting one right here as well? The left inside that space. So I, there is one that goes here, and there's one that goes here. Probably, probably like that, then. Um, if I was in either of those spaces, move one to the right and take two harm. I'm assuming Maribor is going to move with me here. Oh boy, Maribor. Should move this layer up top. Okay, so I'm taking two harm because like a massive terrain wall gets uh smashed and now i'm trapped um does maribor take too harm does maribor take too harm too that'd be great all right well i'm not gonna read slaying because i don't think i have slain nor will slay maribor here i have one hp left I think I would have killed him had I not had some damage at the start of this. I think I would have been pretty dang close. Um, okay, so back to interpreting the role from before. Maribor has a two. So he's not going to move because he's happy being in the same space. He's going to do th uh, three harm to me because we're in the same space right now. I got a six and a four. Um... I mean, I'm dead. I'm dead. So, uh, yeah, I died. Yeah, with same adjacent two, I'm fucked. I I'm, I can't get out of it. I'm, I've got one harm left. So I died. But how can I maximize my harm on my way out? I'm going to do this. Uh, I'm going to go one. All right, I'm going to move one. I'm going to lure attack him in, which deals three, five, plus one. That's six harm to Maribor. And I die right afterwards. I die immediately afterwards. Now, if Maribor also took two harm from the terrain shifting, we would die together. We would kill each other at the same exact time. Think about that for a second, huh? And if I hadn't come into this fight with three less health, I think I would have killed Maribor. I almost killed Maribor uh, on the first go. Uh, now, I, admittedly, I had some very lucky, uh, what you call it, rolls for the boss where he was not doing anything. Uh, but still, pretty good. Pretty good first run on the boss. For a Souls-like game, I'd be pretty happy with that. Um, okay. So that puts our death count to eight. What is this? Tornado warning. Hmm. Hmm. Exciting. Um. Damn. Damn, that was pretty good. That was pretty close. So that puts me back at Sigil. I have... Oh, wait. Wait, wait, wait. What tide is it? What tide is it? It's low tide. 
Sigil. Ah, oh, I need it to be high tide, but I can do something here. I can do something here if I have four lore. Oh my god. Okay, 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 okay. It's two into low tide right now. I'm back at full health. So I'm not gonna stop. I thought I was gonna stop streaming. Uh but no, I gotta I gotta do this. Um Okay. I've got 10 health. I need it to be high tide. So I just need to go up to two, back down. So I just go, I do a little boop, boop, do a little travel, wait for the tide to go. So up, down, it is now a fresh high tide. Okay, fresh high tide, and something can happen in Sigil that I wasn't able to do. I, I remember seeing this at the very beginning. I didn't read the lore, but I remember seeing I could do something if I had lore four, and I have lore four now. Um, so, let me, oh, I remember what I was gonna update. This, this is high tide now. High tide, fresh high tide. All right, let's see what we can do here. Uh, search, so I'm gonna mark the action. Uh, I'm also going to uh, mark it with the X. Great. Um, searching the sigil site. Requires lower four plus, got that. You can now travel between the pensive bluffs, six, and the cave, eight. Oh. Oh, this is how you get to the cave. I thought it was going to be that tunnel, that key. So what is the tunnel for? Does the tunnel give me safe passage across the gulch? Now I really want the key. That's what I'm guessing it's for. I can do that, but only at low tide. Okay, so let me let me put a little I'm going to put a little dash here. Um connect these two so that I can do that. Um, I now know that that is possible in a low tide situation. As the water recede, as the waters recede, the snails start to move in a singular direction, forming a trail that leads north. Some of the snails stick to you, migrating to whichever side of your body points in the same direction as the procession on the ground, like the needle of a compass. <sighs> so the snails know something. The snails know something, and I wish to know what the snails know. So, okay. I got to get over there, right? But wait, no, I want the key. What? It's high tide. I think the key is at three. Let's go back to three. So I'm at sigil. Uh, go to two to three. Uh, we are one tick away from going to low tide. Which is what I needed to be. So I'll just do a little dance. Four, back to to three, makes uh one tick low tide, and here we go. Here we go. I have to I have to fight, which is fine. I needed to fight anyway to get my death penalty off of me. I have a harpoon now. Uh, okay, we're gonna do this fight. Ideally, I get this key. That'll be a good stopping point for the day. Okay, so fight. Uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> two soldiers, two archers, B3, A4. B3, A4. Uh, two archers, C3, D2. Okay, uh, I start at A2. And there's permanent terrain at B2, C4. B2, C4. I feel like I remember this fight now. D3 and D4, I remember this fight now. I died a lot. This fight has killed me every single time. The key fight is now. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm having the flashbacks of the key fight now. I remember this fight now. I remember how hard this fight is by not being able to move. Um, but now I can pull archers to me. Which is going to be really, really helpful. To just nuke archers with my harpoon. So here we go. Let's do this thing, folks. Let's let's do one more fight. Yeah, hopefully the harpoon helps. I think the harpoon's gonna be really helpful here. Uh, let me set my health counters for my uh, enemies here. Shoe spaces puts in work. Yeah, it super does. Uh, so here we go. Let's see uh, what our enemies do. Let's start with the soldiers. 
6 and 2. This one gets a 6. This one gets a 2. Uh, I'm pretty sure I remember how these, these fools uh, work, but let's go down to the thing. Anyway, 2 is a move 1 and harm 2. So moves here uh, and is trying to really hurt me. This guy, thank God, is just swinging wildly by himself in the air. That helps a ton with our first round. Uh, what do the archers do? A one and a five. Let's uh, let's track these things because it'll be it'll be a lot to track otherwise. One and five for our archers. Uh, move two, harm one. So this one's gonna just move here, doing one harm. This one is move one, harm two. Ooh, that's great. It does not get close enough to hurt me. So I've got two enemies that are not hurting me this turn, which is super, super helpful. I've got three harm coming in all day. Um, okay, this is good. This is good. Uh, let's see how I can do this. Okay, <laughs> swing wildly. What, what if? What if I was like, you know what? Let me help you out there, friend. Come on in. Come on closer. Uh, what do I? What am I gonna get here? Uh, I got a three and a two. Not particularly strong. Don't you want him to feel like he's contributing? That's true. That would be rude of me not to not to let him help. Um, okay, three and two is going to allow me to do three harm to something, which I'm totally going to do. I'm going to pull one of these archers in and kill it. That's what I'm going to do. So uh, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to assign the two here. I'm going to assign the three here. I'm going to stay here because this archer is doing two harm. I want to. I want to not be in its range and and increasing that. So I'm going to actually stay here, lure this archer in one closer. So now that archer is not doing anything to me, uh, and I'm going to do one harm plus these two harm. Archers have three health. Killed this archer. I am still uh, going to take the harm from this soldier. The two points of harm from it, but. Uh, that ain't bad. That ain't bad for a first turn. I've got one enemy down right away. I know I could have moved, but I didn't want to move closer to this guy. And if I moved here, this archer, then I'm in its range of three spaces. Uh, in case anybody's wondering why I did what I did. Okay. Okay. That's pretty good. Let me mark down my uh, movement penalty. And let's see what these uh, enemies do. Let's start with the soldiers. Um, top one, bottom one, two and six. Oh, it's literally the exact same thing. Oh my God. This is amazing. This fight normally kicks my ass, but this one fool flailing in the corner helps so much. So much. Two and six. Okay. Okay. What does the archer do? Three. Is that the hyper movement one? Yeah, it is. Uh, two spaces and harm one. So it's going to go here and then here it's ready to start hurting me so i do have um i have three harm coming my way because of these two enemies uh so let's figure out how we want to deal with that i got a four and a three okay, my phone keeps going off probably because of the tornado warning uh four and three Okay, four and three. I think I can just kill another one of these archers. Um, or I could kill a soldier. Maybe I kill a soldier. Maybe I kill a soldier. Four and three, I can go... Uh, it actually doesn't matter which way I assign them because it's the same outcome. So that's that helps me a lot. So now I'm just thinking about it. I have two movement if I wanted to. I can move one. Uh, and I have three harm that I'm dealing. But if I lure this guy on top of me, I bring it up to four. I kill him, but I take a bunch of harm from him. I don't think I want to do that. I'm not going to do that. That would be that'd be irresponsible. I am going to lure this guy closer. I'm going to do the same thing I did last time, and I'm going to kill an archer uh, with three harm. I'm going to take the two from this guy again. Uh, it's 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 rough not being able to block the soldiers, but. It's okay. I'm gonna get the key. Get the key. <laughs> um, which is gonna help a lot, I think. I hope. I really hope this key is worth it. 
Uh, all right, let's roll these soldiers again. Top gets a three, bottom gets a five. Okay, so that's going to change it up a little. Three and five. Oh, I think I forgot to move that soldier. I think that soldier should have been on top of me. Yeah, I made a mistake. That soldier should have been on top of me. Okay, it will be this turn. Jumps on top of me. Uh, this guy is move one, harm one, block one. Okay, so I've now got uh, three harm, four harm coming my way uh, with my current situation. Um, so that's that's rough. I'd like to be able to have my movement, but I don't right now. So let's see what I can do with it. Shit, I almost dropped my dice. Five and two. Five, two. No, not 21. Five and two. Okay, what can I do with five? Ooh, three harm. But I think I want to get away from the other one. I think I want to do it like this. Go like this, which lets me move one. Uh... I can kill it, and I just take additional harm from it. Yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to kill it. I'm going to move this thing. I'm going to lure it, pull it in. Uh, I'm going to take three harm from it, but I'm also going to uh, kill this soldier with my three harm plus one from being in the same space. Okay. Okay. I'm I'm obviously in, like, in a really bad position for fu future fights, but for... Um, for this fight and getting the key, I'm in a great position. And then I'm just going to go back to Sigil and I'm going to rest. Um, because I will have absolved myself of the, the, the movement penalty and then I can go get fresh health uh, and that will be good for me. <laughs> uh, so let's see what this enemy does. Two. That is the move one to harm. Uh, I am going to get a one and a three. One and three, huh? Well, one doesn't do me any good. I could burn it so I get out of my movement penalty entirely, unless a four is particularly helpful. It's not. So, yeah, I'm going to burn that. I will now be able to freely move next turn. Uh, and my three, I'm going to just assign here. Uh, so I'm going to do two damage to the soldier. Uh, it's doing two damage to me. I really have to basically kill this thing with ranged attacks. That's what I have to do. I have to I have to get ranged attacks on the soldier. God damn it. I just want this key. I'm so close to getting the key. All right, the soldier gets a four, which is the... Uh, Oh, it's the move one, harm two. Okay, move one, harm two. Really need to get some double movement going here. Because if I'm next it, I'm dead. And a six and a three. Six and a three. I think that's perfect. I think six and three is perfect. I think. It is. It's the double movement that I needed. Okay, okay. I was about to say, I thought I, I thought I was screwed. I didn't have the movement here on this six, but I have it here. Okay, so I can move two and get away from it. And I'm just doing one harm. So the soldier has one harm left, uh, one HP left, but I didn't get hit by it. That's the important thing. Uh, okay, now I only need to be able to move one to stay away from it. That was so important that I got double movement there. Uh, enemy gets a five. I think that is the move one, block one, harm one. Yep, okay. All right, so it's gonna move, block, harm one. Uh, I am gonna get six and five. Okay, I think we did it. I think we did the dang thing. Did we? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I panicked that I didn't have the movement for a second. Six and five. Um, uh, okay, so. If I go like that, it lets me move one away, do three harm to this thing, kill the soldier, kill it. It doesn't kill me, but I do enough damage to kill it. I killed the thing, and I have survived with one HP. I've survived with one HP. 
But I think I'm finally going to get my, my goddamn key. I mean, I'll mark this fight, but it's going to get unmarked here in a second. I'm going to go rest it. Sigil. Uh, search. Requires lower plus two. Two plus. Uh, I'm lower four, I'll have you know. I'm very smart. Uh, find the tunnel key. I'm really psyched about having this key. <laughs> Oops. Get some... I don't know what it's for yet, though. That's the thing. I, I have the capacity to go between 6 and 8 now in low tide, and I have a key. I don't know what the key is for. Um. Okay, let's mark this, though. An old metal key molded to look like a gnarled, uneven branch of coral. Okay. Okay. So let me mark that. Two into a high tide right now. Uh, I'm going to spend... So I'm two into a, low, uh, a high tide right now. Uh, I will go one, two, which resets, gets us here. And I will rest, which means I'll be one tick into a low tide. One tick into a low tide. That's the eel fight to cross. I don't want to do the eel fight. I honestly would rather just sacrifice the HP. Would I? Or maybe I can successfully fight these eels now that I have the harpoon. Maybe I can fight these eels. And I don't have the movement penalty anymore. One, two. Yeah, I mean, I can cross against the eels that I'm high tied over here. I need to get it to low to use this tunnel that I can move around a little. Uh, okay, so just to make sure, I hear I unmark all fights in the realm, right? So on my unmark all the fights, but I do regain all my. Uh, I think it's the only fight. Um, I do get my what you call it back, health. I have the health back. I have no movement penalty. So like, now is a great time to go fight the boss. Which I can't do right now because I gotta cross this gap and either just lose 3 HP, which is not a good idea, or fight the eels. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna fight the eels. I got one more fight in me. I got one more fight in me, and then this is a longer stream, but I'm gonna I've got one more fight in me. I will fight the eels, I will cross, and then I'll be on the other side. My goals for tomorrow will be figuring out what's going on here and maybe fighting Maribor one more time. So, we go, uh, boop, boop, two marks into a low tide. Uh, well, actually, we're three marks into a low tide, and we are going to fight the eels. Let's fight the eels. Low tide, eel fight, two walking eels and a geist eel, A3, D3, and D1, A3. D3, D1. This is, I remember the setup of this fight. That's the nice thing is like, you start to just remember uh, how all the fights go <laughs> once you die to them a billion times. All right, so we got difficult terrain in the middle. I'm pretty sure I start here, if I recall correctly. Yep, B2. And then we can move. Okay, okay, here we go. And this will tick it over into high tide after this fight. Here we go, here we go. Hope you're all ready to watch me kill some eels. Uh, Alright, let's roll for our walking eels first. Four and three. Four and three. Cool. What does that do? I've forgotten already what our friendly eels do. The four and a three. Reset my health. Oh, that's a great reminder. 
Uh, four uh, and three are the... Oh, that's the scout commander. Ooh, scout commander. Four and three are different. Okay, so four, move one, harm one, goop me. Okay, so this guy's going to goop me. Uh, the other one is move two, harm one. So it's going to go up, up. All right. So I've got uh, two harm coming my way in a gooping. Uh, the Geist Eel is a 5. What does Geist Eel 5 do? Move 2, harm 1, fetch. Okay? So, I want to I'm, I want to be able to use my... I, I can move. I have free movement, which helps me a ton. Um, oh, wait, it is a 5. That helps me a ton. Now I just need to use it to my advantage to mess up these eels. 6 and 2. Six and two. Oh, oh. Uh, what can we do with a six and a two? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I can do this, right? So I can go. I can go one, two. Lure this guy onto me, and I do more than enough harm to it to kill it. Or I could go one, two. Lure this guy on. And kill him instead. Yeah, actually, I th I'm going to do this so that I don't get gooped. Because I'm out of the goop range now. I don't want to get gooped. Because normally this, this gooping applies even if the harm gets blocked. Um, or anything, but... It's not getting blocked or negated at all. It's just not happening. So as far as I understand, there's no hit. So I think I'm, I'm safe. So I'm going to do exactly what I said. It's overkill and killing the Geist, but it's worth it. So boop, boop, lure the Geist onto this space. It can't hurt me. Neither of these can hurt me. I'm doing four, uh, five harm to the Geist eel. I'm killing it. Kill the Geist eel. Great start. I am cornered. It's not great to be cornered, but... I'll do that instead of being gooped. I like my movement. Uh, let's see what our eels do. Five and one. Uh, okay, so what does a five and a one do for our eels? Uh, move one, harm one. So it's, this is the, the gooping technique again. So it's going to move here. It'll, so it's kind of cornering me, gooping me. Uh, I am within its goop range. The other one is a move to harm one. So up, up. Okay. I might want to just like move right onto this thing's face, or if I can, just blow past it. Um, but we'll see. Six and one. All right, well, the one's just not going to do us any good. So it's just, what do I want to do with the six? Okay, I know what I'm going to do with the six. Uh, I'm going to move one. Because uh, I didn't get goop last turn, so I have all my movement. I'm going to move one. Uh, this will deal four harm to this thing, so it'll kill this, but I'll take two harm from it because uh, we're in the same space. But I killed the eel. Now it's me versus one eel. I, I, I love me versus one eel. It's exciting. Uh, all right. It gets a two. Pretty sure that is the move two harm one technique. Yep. One, two. Uh, I will roll a three and two. Three and two. Three and two and three. What can I do with a three and a two? I mean, I'll kill it. I'll take more harm, but I'll kill it. Oh wait, it doesn't take harm. I I wasn't supposed to take harm from that eel because it uh it doesn't hurt at same space. Oh, that's why this is brilliant. That's right. I'm fine. Because I I lure this fool in. He can't hurt me because he doesn't hurt in same. Uh I do one, three, plus one. I killed the eel. I killed the eels with no harm. Eels are easy breezy now with the harpoon. Love that. Um Okay. Do that. It fills it in. That freshens the tide to high tide as I land on space 
five. Uh, but, 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 wait, space five. Space five with the key, the lore I need. I have everything I need to make space five the maximum awesomeness that it can be. Um, but we've gone long. We've gone an hour and a half. So I will do this tomorrow. I won't read what it, what I can do. I don't, I'm going to even just take it off the screen because I don't want to spoil it for myself. Uh, let me leave a note for myself. Um, start on five. Uh, start on five, which is a really, really awesome. I'm like in a perfect position. Full health. No more death penalty. Got the key. Got the four lore I need to engage with space five in whatever way I can. So I can do that, and then my other goal is to do the six to eight interaction, and then maybe fight Maribor tomorrow. Okay, this was great. Uh, thanks, folks, for watching this. Uh, if you're watching this on the VOD, check out the links below. It'll take you to the Rune website where you can find the playtest material. You can try all this out yourself. Um, there's also links to the other VODs um, somewhere up on the screen, probably. Uh, in case you missed parts one and two, I will be back tomorrow afternoon to possibly finish my playthrough of Coral Rock. Uh, have yourselves a wonderful rest of the day, morning, afternoon, uh, evening, wherever it is you are. I'll talk to you later. Bye.